Hello everybody, today we are going to be going through the way that I set up my quick menu on my Sony a7R Mark IV. So let's get into it. Thank you for joining me today. This is Joe with the F-Stops here, and today we're going through the way that I set up the quick menu on my Sony a7R Mark IV. It's important to note that this video really should be viewed in conjunction with my button layout video, because there are certain things that I have removed from the quick menu of my camera, and I still need them accessible to me, and I've done so with button layout. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, it is uh, instructive on why certain things are left out out of the way that I set up my quick menu button. Uh, before we get into it, as always, everything we do here is brought to you by the F-Stops here. Uh, we specialize in creating educational uh, tools for photographers. We've got uh, three books on the iBookstore. We have a four-hour introduction to photography class, and of course, we have our popular photography cheat sheets, which uh, give you uh, simple and quick instruction on getting into a new subject matter. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. The quick menu uh, button brings up the uh, what's called the quick menu and um, this is going to be the 12 most commonly uh, adjusted or changed things uh, in a camera and so Sony gives you uh, at the outset uh, a certain number of things inside of here including the drive mode part of the autofocus system uh, the things that they feel are most commonly adjusted and these are then duplicated with the buttons that you decide uh, to utilize. And so the C1, C2, C3 buttons uh, are oftentimes uh, features that are duplicated in the function menu. Now, the way that I set up a function menu is in conjunction with my button layout. So I've got my button layout video that goes through where I place my autofocus options, where I place um, exposure options, things like that. And so I have then removed those features from my quick menu or my function menu. Uh, and that, mean I, that means I need to fill that space with something else that would also be useful for me. So I have moved white balance to a direct button, my autofocus system direct to a direct button. And that means I had plenty of room to play with. Uh, and you can adjust the items inside of your quick menu just by going into the second shooting menu in your camera. Uh, you're going to notice here that I'm going to start off with three things having to do with flash. Now, if you know me, you know that uh, my specialty in shooting is in studio lighting and portraiture, and that's something that I teach quite a bit. And so the first three items here are going to be uh, flash oriented. So the first First one is the flash mode, and that's going to be if flash is on or if it's off. And this second one is going to be flash compensation. So if you're working with a TTL lighting system, you'd be able to go into flash compensation and quickly move your flash compensation up or down, and it's going to adjust either a flash on board the camera or through your transmitter the uh, flash power of your entire flash setup. So if you have perhaps a Goddard system and you've got a couple uh, 600 watt second units, you can quickly change the entirety of your exposure uh, going through flash compensation. Um, now notice that is going to be just a global change, of course. If you're working with a transmitter in multiple groups, you'll probably want to adjust individual groups by themselves, but this is a fast way of just saying that you want the entirety of your flash exposure to be brighter or darker. Now, if you're working with a transmitter, and I oftentimes am, then you will need the wireless feature to be turned on or off. In this case, of course, on with a wireless transmitter. And so that's what I have set up as my third option. So I've grouped these three flash controls together because I think of them thematically. I don't want those separated um, from uh, from each other. I want to quickly be able to turn my wireless control on and off depending on if I have a flash on board the camera or transmitter. I want to be able to control that the flash is operating and I want to quickly be able to uh, change flash compensation. Um, so those are kind of grouped together. Uh, the next thing of course here is audio signals. And these are going to be anything that is uh, totally arbitrary uh, for the focusing system. So the chirping sound when you pull focus is an audio signal. There are several others as well. And I tend to leave those 
off with my particular camera. I don't need additional audio signals and uh, I have it set that way so that it's very quick for me to basically turn into a silent shooting mode uh, when I am working. Now this is separate, it should be noted, uh, from going from a mechanical shutter uh, to an electronic shutter. Uh, that is true silent shooting mode. Uh, so silent shooting mode is really three things, going to electronic shutter, audio signals being off, and flash being turned off because flash needs a mechanical shutter to sync. And so audio signals is just your arbitrary sounds. It does not mean that you immediately go to a, an electronic shutter as opposed to a mechanical. That I have as its own button, but this is a, a way that I can turn that on and off. I leave it off for my shooting, but if I'm handing the camera to somebody, uh, particularly somebody who's not really a photographer, um, uh, then I'm going to turn that back on so that they're more comfortable with it. And that's the way that I kind of uh, operate. The next item is displaying the face detection on and off. I usually like this on, but if you are shooting uh, like a vacation type of shot where there are bunches of people around, uh, the face detection boxes are just going to start getting annoying and getting in the way. And so you might want to turn them off. Again, this is something I don't use very often. This is kind of taking in some space in my function menu until and unless I find something that I would use more often, but it's a way of changing the visualization on the screen, which might be helpful for me uh, or might be helpful if someone else might be using my camera. Now, I gotta be honest, um, metering mode is in here just as filler. Um, I put my camera into center weighted metering and I never change it. Um, I, I shoot manually and base my exposure off of the histogram which is always live on my screen and so I don't feel real need to ever change my metering mode. It's in center weighted uh, explicitly uh, for when I'm using TTL lighting equipment. I want the center weighted metering to uh, run the TTL lighting equipment but it's really not ever changed. It's just kind of here. Um, many people do change their metering mode more often and so they might find it useful to have this accessible uh, but for me it's just not. Now this next item it's grayed out uh, but that's only because uh, I'm not shooting video or in video mode at the moment with my camera but this is the audio recording level if you're shooting video being able to quickly go in and change uh, the record level that you are uh, getting from the microphone and the camera system that you're working with and the video feed that you have and that you're monitoring is very very useful and so I do like to have this here. So these next uh, couple uh, items are there to be able to really control uh, my workflow if I'm being very specific about it. And that's going to lead right in for me conceptually to our next item, which is zebra display. So this is showing in exposure uh, how close you are to clipping. And uh, zebra display is super useful when you need to be very careful about exposure. And that specifically includes video, which is why I think of zebra display as thematically linked with my, uh, with my audio record level. And so I turn it off when I'm shooting stills most of the time. I'll turn it on if I'm being very careful about exposure in video, and it's a very useful tool. Uh, one day I might do a video just about zebra display because of how powerful it can be in giving you accurate information about your exposure. Uh, now if I'm framing shots, especially when shooting video and framing shots, uh, this next item, which is the grid line, is very useful. Grid line is different ways of laying out and overlaying grid patterns so that you can uh, get the composition that you are looking for on your screen. Again, I use this mostly for video workflow to make sure that I'm framing images the way that I want them for viewing later. I tend to turn it off when I'm shooting stills. So that's been pretty useful for me. Um, next is stabilization. Uh, here they call it steady shot in the Sony system. Uh, this is something I think you've got to have direct access to. Super useful to be able to turn this on and off. I'm going onto a tripod and off frequently uh, with my camera system uh, because I shoot a whole lot of my landscape and my portraiture and my uh, video on tripods. And so it's very useful for me to be able to turn this on and turn this off. Remember, you want to turn this off whenever you're on a tripod. So this is something that comes into play a lot and I like having a very fast direct access to it. I think this should actually be uh, a key thing in function menus just to immediately get to, if not a direct button for, uh, for people.
My next item has to do with the memory card, and that's prioritizing the record media. So being able to make sure that I know where something is being recorded to. I did have uh, an issue when I first started working, I believe with my A7R 3 uh, which was the first camera I had that was a dual card slot, and it did not, and Sony still do not come out of the box auto switching from memory card slot one to slot two. You have to tell it to do this, and I actually had a clip running, uh, shooting video, and it just stopped, and it didn't have permission to switch over to card slot two. Ever since then, I've wanted to make sure I have fast access to my uh, record media and how my uh, my content is being recorded. So I like having that directly there. It doesn't get opened very often, but I like having that immediately accessible. The last item is the exposure mode. Now it's grayed out because I'm in a stills mode with my camera, uh, but this is really used when you are shooting video and being able to say, all right, I'm in video mode. I wanna switch from a shutter priority video to manual exposure video. Uh, and being able to make that change quickly. So I find that to be very, very useful uh, when I'm doing that back and forth workflow. So uh, it, it grays out when shooting stills because you just change it on the exposure dial on the top of the camera, but in video mode, this is how you make that adjustment. So I like having that immediately accessible. Anyway, that's the way that I lay out the function menu or the quick menu on my Sony camera. Uh, and if I use a different Sony camera, I lay it out pretty much the exact same way. And the things that aren't in here uh, are usually direct buttons. I like to have my autofocus as just two buttons on the top of the camera. I like my drive mode to be a direct button. I like my white balance to be a direct button. So I've removed those from here. And as you can see, some of these get a lot more use than others. And if I find a menu uh, option that would be uh, particularly useful for me, I've got several things in here that I would drop out and be able to substitute. So I actually have more room than necessary and I don't feel that uh, a properly laid out uh, button and function menu uh, system should ever require you to jump into the full menu when you're shooting. So I hope this has been helpful uh, for you and thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time.